Well, hello, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman once again, and today we are going to be making some conversions of some liquid measurements. Uh, we are in our home links, Unit 8, Lesson 10, with uh, an activity entitled Liquid Measurements and Fractions. Now, before we get started on this activity, I want to show you a couple things. This is the cover of your Everyday Math, math Journal, Volume 2. This is the inside cover of your math journal. This is a selfie of me with the inside cover of your math journal. Wait a minute, how'd that get in here? Anyway, let's get back to this. This is the inside cover of your math journal, which on the inside front cover of your math journal is a table of measurements, which gives you all the conversions you would ever need to help you solve the problems uh, both in this assignment and really any assignment which asks you to convert between units of measure, either in U.S. customary uh, units or the metric system, which, you know, everyone else in the world uses, okay? But since we're stubborn Americans and we like our cups and pints and gallons, we're going to use customary units, okay? Now, even if you didn't have access to that math journal, uh, you can use the tables that you see here at the top of your assignment to help you figure out some conversions anyway. Okay? Problems 1 and 2 ask you to complete the What's My Rule table and state the rules. Well, number, number 1, we want to know what the rule is if you have two gallons and you come out with 16 pints. Well, if two gallons equals 16 pints, well, that means I have to do something to the number two to get 16. Okay, well, this feels like a multiplication problem to me. What times two gives me 16? Well, that is pretty simple. Two times eight is 16. So that must be my conversion rate. So if I have two gallons, that's equivalent to 16 pints. So what's the rule? Well, that would be one gallon equals eight pints. Okay? So the rule is multiply times 8. So whatever I have in my column on the left, I'm going to multiply by 8. So there's where it gets tricky. I've got some mixed numbers involved. So, for example, if I want to know how many pints are in 3.5 gallons, I'm going to multiply this amount by 8. Well, when I multiply a mixed number by a whole number, it's kind of like multiplying a number with multiple digits. Three and a half times eight. I'm going to set up that problem like so. Here's three and a half. And here's eight. So if I use partial products as my strategy, I'm going to multiply three times eight. I'm going to multiply a half times eight. Well, three times eight is giving me 24. One times eight, because I'm only multiplying the numerator, is going to give me eight. Eight what? Eight halves. Now, at this point, if I add these two parts together, I get a very ugly number, 24 and 8 halves. Well, that's not very convenient, so I need to do something with that. So I'm going to change 8 halves into uh, groups of 2, because that's what a half is. It's uh, uh, one half of a whole, so that means there's two parts. So I convert 8 halves into groups of 2, by dividing 8 by 2. Now, you probably already did the mental math before I even wrote this out, because you know that 2 times 4 is 8. So, 24 and 8 halves is the same as saying 24 and 4 wholes, which gives us a total of 28. 28 what? It would be 28 pints. So, if I multiply 3 and a half times 8, I'm going to get an output of 28 pints, okay? 
The same is true for our problem here in number two, this table. If I have three quarts, I get 12 cups. What's the conversion rate? How did I get from three to 12? Well, this also is a multiplication problem. Three times something gives me 12. You're probably already shouting it at the screen. It's four, Mr. Wassman. Well, of course it is. Three times four is 12. But again, I don't want to know how many cups are in three quarts. I want to know how many cups are in one quart. Well, this is where our knowledge of fact families comes in useful. Three and four and 12 are part of the multiplication and division fact family. So if I know that three quarts has 12 cups, if I take the number of cups and divide it into quarts, I can figure out how many cups are in a quart. 12 divided by 3 is, you guessed it, 4. So the conversion rate is 1 quart equals 4 cups. Or otherwise, you're just going to multiply times 4. The rule is to multiply times 4. So, for example, if I multiply 4 and a half times 4, I will get my number of cups out of that number of quarts. Okay? Four and a half times four. Let's do the scratch work right here. Four and one half times four. Well, I know that four times four is going to give me 16. And if I multiply a half times four, that's going to give me four halves. And if you are a sharp mental math student, you would see four halves is just another way of saying two. Because for every two halves, you get one whole, and two divided into four would give you two groups of two, okay? So really, what I'm doing is I'm adding 16 plus 2, and that, of course, is going to give me 18. 18 what? It gives me 18 cups out of my quarts, okay? So you can use that inside front cover of your math journal to get those conversions. Yep, here we have one pint equals two cups, two pints equals one quart, so of course that means that one quart is the same as four cups, okay? But if you can just make some connections using the table, use some context clues to help you figure out the rule, now that you have the rule, the rest of these problems are going to go pretty quickly. Okay, so when I have 32 cups, I'm going to use that idea of the math fact family triangle to uh, reverse engineer the answer. 32 divided by 4 cups per quart is going to give me the number of quarts I started with, and of course that's 8. 32 divided by 4 gives me 8, so I'm just going to put the number 8 right here. Okay. And that's pretty much how you solve those first two problems. Now, the rest of these problems are going to require you to do some conversions of some liquid measurements dealing with fractions and or mixed numbers. Okay? I'll let you try problem number three, all those parts on your own. Okay? So finally, let's take a look at some of these practice problems. We've got some large digit division going on here. Okay? Uh... When I look at a problem like number 5, I can tell already that it's going to be a whole number quotient because I've got 5 as a divisor, and my dividend ends in a 5. And any number that ends in a 5 is divisible by 5 equally. Okay, So let's try a problem that we're not so sure about. 4,671 divided by 9. Now, is this number divisible equally by 9? Well, I don't know. Maybe. It's an odd number, so chances are pretty good, but we won't see until we actually do the work. And that requires us to use the long division strategy of division, multiplication, subtraction, bringing down, checking, and repeating. Dad, mom, sister, brother, cousin, rover. All right, so I'm going to start with 9 into 4. Can I divide 4 by 9? No, I can't. So I would put a 0 here, because 0 times 9 is 0. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to bring down the 6, and I start over. Okay. Now, I could have just 
started with 46, knowing that 4 is too small to be divided by 9. So I start here at 46. How many groups of 9 can I get out of 46? Well, I know that 9 times 5 is 45. So I can start right here. 46 minus 45 leaves me 1. I'm going to subtract 6 minus 5. I got 1. Bring down that 7. 17 is bigger than my divisor, so I repeat. How many groups of 9 can I get out of 17? Well, I can get 1. Huh? Well, 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 2? Well, that's 18. 18 is bigger than 17. So the best I can do is 1 group of 9. So I subtract 17 minus 9, and I'm left with a difference of 8. I bring down my 1, and now I'm left with 81, which of course is bigger than my divisor. So again, I repeat the process. Now at this point, you can see that we're not going to have a remainder because you and I both know that 9 times 9 is 81. 81 is a multiple of 9. So when I go through the process of dividing, multiplying, subtracting again. I'm left with nothing. There's nothing to bring down. So my quotient, my answer here, is 519. Okay? We are coming close to the end of Unit 8, which means you are coming close to the end of your fourth grade year in everyday math. So I hope that all of these individual little pieces uh, liquid measurements, multiplying by fractions, large digit division, are all kind of falling into place because you've had plenty of practice in each and every one of these areas. But if you're still scratching your head at one or more of these problems, if you're just still unsure, just need a reaffirming word, you need to talk to your math teacher. They will be happy to help you uh, kind of slog through all these problems. Okay? Hey, friends, we are near the finish line. If you are on Unit Eight, lesson 10, uh, summer is just around the corner. So I want you to finish this year strong. So if you've got questions, if you're still unsure, you need to ask questions of your math teacher before that final unit test or that end of the year test is rolled out, okay? I hope that you found this video enlightening. I hope that you weren't too uh, unsettled by my inclusion of my selfie. You know, I'm not just a discorporate voice from beyond, uh, from the interwebs. I'm an actual person in a classroom teaching math to real-life students. Uh, but I enjoy teaching you, too, so I hope you found this video to be helpful. Uh, good luck with the home links, and until we talk again, friends, have a good day.